Well, becoming a YouTube star, something I never imagined. Me, a redneck celebrity, a Canadian. Who hears about Canadians? I'm not American. Those are the people who are on Hollywood TV and, you know, that's where you get rich and famous. Well, anyways, I started out as a garbage picker when I was a kid. Uh, just because my father was cheap and I wanted to have things that he wouldn't buy for me. And, of course, I learned if I could fix things, I could have anything I wanted. It might be a little bit old, but so what? So anyways, uh, I had a natural talent to fix things. And so I learned quickly. So I excelled in the shop classes in high school, and I took auto mechanics up to grade 11. That's my only education in auto mechanics. I never worked in a garage either. Well, throughout my teenage life, I was a garbage picker and started fixing cars when I got older. So I always had some spare cash. Learned to drive when I was 17. But when I was 11, I put this big basket on my bicycle that could hold 100 pounds, and that's how I was able to collect my stuff. And every garbage day, I would go out collecting. Well, I got a scholarship when I was 18 to become a machinist, and that's what I figured I'd be. I really enjoyed machine shop more than any other thing in school, because there I could make anything. And I made a couple extreme go-karts and motorized bicycle and stuff like that. I even made a homemade handgun in high school and my teacher took it away. <laughs> I never even got a chance to fire it. So, straight from high school to college, I was still living with my parents, but college was free since it was a scholarship and I was on my way to be a machinist. No problem, that all worked out fine. Got a job in the auto industry as a full-time machinist and was making top wages. Well then my dad kicked me out when I was 23, so I bought this house that I'm living in now and decided that my full-time hobby now was actually more hours a day than my machinist job and I figured it was more profitable. So I took the big step, quit my machinist job, which had benefits, security, great pay, and see if I could make it as a full-time garbage picker and repairman. Never looked back. That was the best decision in my whole life. Instead of seeing and doing the same things every day where I learned nothing, now I was learning new things every day. I challenged myself to be able to fix anything. I, I wouldn't say no, I would take on any job. I did body work, electronics, mechanical. I even cut cars in half, weld them together, rebuilt motors, you know, boat engines, motorcycles, just anything, lawnmowers, anything that was brought in the door, electronics, TVs, microwaves, I would figure out how to fix it and I did. Well, when I was 17 I had it all figured out figured out the meaning of life and to me success was just attitude. I said to myself I looked at rich people and poor people and some of the poor people were smarter than the rich people. The difference was the rich people had an attitude that that's where in life they wanted to be and they had to work hard to get it most of the time like me and so I said to myself well I'm, I'm kind of blessed I'm more intelligent than the average person so I, I can do anything I want. So put on a 20-year quest to work my butt off, very often 12 hours a day, seven days a week. It, it paid off. Good investing also at the same time. Well, then I became semi-retired in my early 40s. You know, didn't need that much money anymore. Had my mortgages paid off and owed no other money. And well, I guess about, what was it, over just over two years ago, I was reading in the business newspaper that I get every day about how Google had bought YouTube, an unprofitable internet company, for a record price of $1.65 billion for a company that has never made a profit and maybe hasn't yet. So I went on the internet to check them out. I always had a hobby of photography and filming. And I had quite a few farm videos that I had made on the farm for the last 20 years. So I thought this was my vehicle to become famous. Although everybody says that. But of course the true motivation was so that I would become at least noticed enough in Canada that my two stolen sons would be able to find me and know who their father was and someday we could reunite. Well, I certainly didn't have any computer skills or editing skills because I had never edited a movie or a video on a computer until I tried to do it for YouTube. And I still haven't evolved much since then. I'm still using crappy Windows Movie Maker, but it's so simple and fast. It's all that matters to me. It kind of adds to the redneck flavor of my videos, I guess. 
So my two kids, my oldest ones, Adam and Michelle, they were the ones who were helping me out and teaching me how to use a computer. And it was actually less than a year ago I actually learned how to do just copy and paste, simple things like that. And it was only a couple years ago I was showed how to do email. So even though I'm very technically inclined and I can fix computers, I can load Windows XP, I can do all the basic things, some of the basic things I can't do. Even to get onto the paid partner program on YouTube, I had to get a YouTube user, CM Lovejoy, from Virginia to help me. I couldn't get very much past the half of the steps. I, I know a lot of other people are having that problem too, but don't ask me. Ask someone else. So in my quest to get noticed on YouTube, I realized, one, you have to be original. Two, having funny videos helps. Three, having lots of action helps. Four, having somewhat of a story to each video, instead of it just ending and leaving you wondering, helps a lot too. Well, I definitely considered myself an original character. I imitated no one. I guess you could say my videos are a cross between Trailer Park Boys, Monster Garage, and The Red Green Show. That's what I would say, but I'm not imitating them whatsoever. Before I ever heard of YouTube, I was planning on setting up my own website to post my videos and trying to, you know, find a way to that I could have my website recognized and people would find it. Well, so long before YouTube came along, I produced two videos, which I figured would be, would be showstoppers and viral videos, and they both were showstoppers and viral videos. There was the cutting the pig's head off with a chainsaw. Of course, you saw the video where we ate it, but I did some acting to make that a shocking video, so it would become popular, and it did. And then next was my redneck roller coaster video. Well, that was 23 seconds long, but within <laughs> about a year, that was on 240,000 different websites. Nobody knew who I was from either video, but at least I had two viral videos out there that I could eventually be recognized if I found a way to create a website that was profitable enough to maintain its bandwidth so that I could be recognized in Canada and eventually have contact with my children. Well, it took me the first six months of being on YouTube to get my first million views and I think about 600 and, mm, 650 subscribers and 65,000 channel views. I didn't have any way of making myself get noticed. I just randomly threw stuff on and saw what happened. I didn't have a MySpace account at that time. I still don't. I didn't know enough about the internet to how to do anything else or link videos or promote videos or do stuff like that. People just found me. Now I'm well past 21 million views in the two years I've been on YouTube. Never expected the situation how it turned into now. For example, just in the last week alone, I've made three different TV deals. One in London, England, one in Marina del Rey, California, and another one in Hollywood, California. Well, this is common. I've been on TV now like 30 times, mostly not even in my own country, <laughs> the United States and everywhere else in the world. Who would have expected an ugly, old, greasy-handed, old a guy like me turning himself into something of a, a kind of a celebrity on the Internet and on TV, too? I don't have a pretty face like those hot women, I don't sing music, I don't have any of those kind of entertainment talents. I found a niche that I didn't know existed. Now if you check out my statistics on YouTube, I'm most often the number one most viewed person in Canada who creates their own videos, like a partner. And I've been number one in the world on the automotive category for a long time. That's a big ticket. I'm, I'm even quite a few steps ahead of Top Gear and some of those other high-value production shows. Anyways, YouTube kind of mirrors my real life. I have a huge following in real life that respect my repair skills and my great free advice I always give them when they drop by or they call me. So I'm always getting free dinners, bottles of wine, uh, thank you notes, pies, it's just commendations, recommendations, all that stuff. And YouTube kind of turned out to be the same thing. YouTube's a full-time job now. At least it's paying good, finally. You know, I was almost thinking of quitting it for the fact that there's just so many hours involved in responding to everyone, creating videos, editing, and reading comments and doing stuff like that, that if it wasn't paying well, 
fame isn't everything, you know. So now with YouTube, I have the same situation as real life. People commending me for what I'm doing and enjoying my videos and asking me all kinds of technical questions and getting great free advice. So nothing's, nothing's changed. It's just that now it's on a global scale. And who knows, uh, the way things are looking, I could have a TV show or whatever someday, but I certainly am getting some exposure now, and I hope on some of my next appearances I can mention YouTube, and that will certainly bring a lot more subscribers and a lot more future income. Now, I don't really need all this income right now. Now that my life is set, I only need $24,000 a year to pay all my bills. So I'm hoping someday to just give this money to help out my children. Well, not in a way that's going to make them lazy, but in some situations it could really help them with education or getting a start in life or stuff like that. So to tell you the truth, being a YouTube star isn't what it's cracked up to be. It's not that exciting anymore being so well recognized and having all these fans because it's so much work. If it wasn't for the fact that I was pretty much fully retired, I wouldn't have the time to do this. Not too many other people would have the time to do this. That's what gives me an advantage. I retired early, and now I can uh, pursue <laughs> my third hobby. Who would ever have imagined that I went from a garbage picker to a machinist, to a garbage picker, retired, and then became an old man celebrity? Gee whiz. <laughs> Life is strange. Well, so far not, nothing too bad is happening, and I hope jail thing works out good. I've got a good case going for me and hope to be around for a long time unless something happens to me who knows I do have some people who don't appreciate me but anyways they keep watching my videos so that's cool and I have a personal message from a fan his name's Caleb he lives in Vermilion Ohio he's 12 he watches me every day well I've got some good advice for you it doesn't care how smart you are it cares how devoted you are to cares what your attitude is and you can be anything you want to be when you grow up just don't give up and do your best hardship strengthens you never look down never never change your mind if this is what you want go for it 